yeah, when you're ready. Welcome to this demonstration that I'm doing for the ROR and I'm working with Sailor here for the most part who's owned by Julia who we're just going to have a quick chat with before we start. Now in this demonstration we're going to be looking at mounting and managing spooky situations. So um, Julia, how long have you had Sailor? Um, I've had him three years now. Three years? Yeah. And um, how, how's he been in that time? Um, he, when we first got him, he was straight from the trainer, so he was um, very sharp and spooky, and we have had quite a few issues with him. He's quite bolshy, um, and so it's been quite a long road, really, with him. Yeah. Uh, but he, he's, he's getting there. Yeah. yeah. So you've had a few, few issues on the ground? Yes, he's, um, he's not too bad at home, but going to events, he's very bolshy when you get him out of the box, running through me, not listening to me, sort of knocking me over has been known to sort of spin around and even kick out, not at anyone or anything, just sort of... Just in sort just of excitement yeah, and frustration. Just, I think it's the atmosphere of shows and things, yeah. um, or sponsored rides, he just sort of gets to a point and almost loses it. Yeah. Um, and, so. and what about Ridden? Ridden, he's, he was very spooky and, and reacts to things I can't see, you know, in the bushes, or he's fine with big tractors and things that you think they might, even bikes at Bedgebury, you know, he's, he's all right with, but a, a lot of it is sunlight, I think, you know, shadows, and he yeah. seems to be quite reactive in woods, coming out of woods. So, so he, he can be an interesting yeah, character. Yeah, and, quirky, um, I think the word is. Quirk, <laughs> quirky. And so we're, we're looking at doing some mounting, and in that we'll be doing some groundwork, in, yeah. including lunging, and how have you found him with lunging, and, he, and that sort um, of thing? He's not great on the lunge. He does tend to um, come in on me, so when I'm lunging him, um, he'll do a few nice circles. He goes out all right. He'll do a nice, few nice circles, and I think he, when he thinks he's had enough, he then comes in at me, um, and if I try and get him to go back out, he has been known to rear up at me, um, and is quite reactive like that. Okay. Um, so that's an issue I do have, especially on his right rein. He seems worse than on the left rein. Uh, which is generally even in ridden work, his right rein is his. Yeah, he's works. slightly more flighty. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Okay, which is all perfectly normal, but it can be managed and it can be improved. Yeah. So it's really interesting to hear all those things because as I work through the groundwork to get him to be um, good mm. to, to mount and stuff, and I know he already is quite good to mount, but we're going to add a bit more detail to that. But it'll be interesting get going through those processes and yeah. and obviously being a spooky horse um, we'll look at how to manage that as well yeah, all right great. let's have a look the first part of this process is about desire so if you have a horse that won't stand to be mounted then they're obviously looking at the mounting block and thinking i don't want to be anywhere near this i want to be away from it so the first thing you need to think about is how can you improve your horse's desire to want to be by the mounting block? Now it could be any number of things depending on your horse. I'm going to show you uh, an idea that could work for you. But think outside the box. This is not just about uh, doing exactly what I say. It's understanding the principles behind. So to increase a horse's desire to be by the mounting block, what I might do is I might ask Sailor here to lunge round. So create some movement. Get him moving around. So for this, for this part of the process to work, you need to have A, a horse that can lunge, uh, and B, a horse that you can stop where you want, to, where you want them to stop. Now, I'm gonna go all the way around again. And I'm going to start to think about stopping Sailor by the mounting block. So I start to think about... Whoa, whoa. <coughs> okay, so I didn't do very well there on my stop. So I need to ask Sailor, who's a little bit worried about this. So again, we're running through some processes. So desensitising there before I get into it too much. 
and I'm going to just ask him, just tap, when he brings his hind leg around, that's great. Tap this side. Now he's coming into that tap, which we don't particularly want. So we'll just wait for him to move away and then relax again. He's got to think, I'm touching, two, three, good step. Great. So that'll do for now, it's not perfect, but that's fine. And I've actually gone through the second process in that, in that little clip. So I've got the lunging and what I call the clock. So we'll have a look at the clock in just a second, but we'll do that once more. You'll notice I'm on the other side of the mounting block because I want to put the mounting block on the, on the left side of my horse. Good. This time I'll ask him to stop over by the mounting block. I'm going to bring my whip to the front. Ooh. So we've got no stop there. And he's turned to me. <coughs> so we're going to try that again. So I'm going to forget about the mounting block because I don't have a stop on the lunge. So let's see if we can get a stop on the lunge. I'm going to do that because I don't want him to instantly turn and face me when I ask him to stop. So there he wants to turn and face me. So when I walk out to him, whoa, I'm going to keep walking and ask him to stop there. So when we're teaching our horses to stop on the lunge, we want our horse, we want our horse to, to um, as they go around, to stop either turning and facing us, if I ask, or stop on their line of travel. So we'll try that again. So I bring my whip up, walk down, a little better, stay out, good. So I've just caught him with my lunge whip there and just guided him back onto the, onto the straight. And you can do this in a walk to start with as well. I'm sort of doing it in a trot. So if I go, oh, there he's starting to just step out. He's starting to understand that when I step to the front, and I've got my whip up like this to help me keep him out there. The whip is no longer driving him forward. So he's got to think, well, what do you want me to do? And the answer is just to stop. Because all my energy, as I said before, when I step in front of a horse, it tends to make them want to stop. So I'm using that to help him to understand if I step in here, just come back to a stop. But it doesn't mean turn and face. If I was to ask him to turn and face me on the lunge, I would indicate more to his hind end to move round and then come to me as opposed to stopping up straight. So they're different, they're very different cues. Forward, trot on, trot on, good. And we'll walk to his eye, to his eye. Good. That's getting better. I want to be on this side of you. There, that's where I want to be. So you can see, see how their desire starts to improve. Or at least I hope you can start to understand that. He, while he's working around, just going forward, I'm sort of getting him a little bit sort of where do you want me to be? What do you want me to do now? And then I present the mounting block as an option. And then hopefully after a while, I'll, where, when I put a mounting block out, it becomes a target for him. It becomes a place of, oh yeah, I can stand here and rest. And that's how you increase the desire. But to, to get him into those positions, you've got to have good control of your horse. So we're going to do the clock just quickly. You see, I've already sort of done it, but this might make, make a little more sense. 
um, as an exercise. So first check your horse is good with your aids. And then I want you to hold your whip up nice and short, uh, your whip, your rope up nice and short. And then I'd like you to ask your horse to move. Let's say my horse is at 12 o'clock now. I'm going to move to three o'clock. So a quarter of a circle. And basically, Sailor is like the hand on a clock. So I want to try and keep him straight and moving around me. He shouldn't push through the center. Good. And when I get to the quarter mark, I'm going to push back. That will stop him from going sideways past that quarter mark. So you've got to be able to control your horse so that they don't keep going sideways. And the way to stop them from um, doing that is to just step them back. Also, you can see here sailors bending. If the horse does that again, a step back, a little shake with your hand will also help straighten them up because we're trying to keep that body relatively straight and get the feet to move laterally around me. And this is really useful in mounting because I can then position my horse should I need to. Okay, so let's do one more quarter this way. Over, one more step, perfect. That was really nice. So he's done that without too much trouble and stayed quite straight. That is great. Okay, so we've got that. And the old saying is, what you do to one side, you must do to the other. So a little rub, and we'll ask him to move um, from here now, which is my new 12 o'clock, this time to 9 o'clock. So I'll ask him to move over, good. And step back at 9 o'clock. Good, just one little step back. And I'm, I'm holding up nice and short so that me, as the centre of the clock, I don't get too much wobble. I don't get too much push forward or too much back. I want to keep his head fairly well fixed um, to, to one spot if I can. So that's his objection to being told to move. So just count two, three, four, keep a rhythm, two, three, four, there. Good. And relax. <sighs> Okay, and we'll do that again. So we need to have a little less resistance. I'm tapping him there, and he's, he's either trying to work out which way to go, or he's thinking, I know how to stop that tap, I'm gonna kick it, which he has done a couple of times. Good, and good. There's another quarter, little step back. Well done. Okay, one last time this way. Over. Good. When he takes a step, stop tapping as well. You don't need to tap all the time. So you will have noticed there, I tap with a rhythm. The more, I, more energy I put into the tap, the slower the rhythm to give my horse the opportunity to respond to that tap. They need that little bit of um, thinking time. And then when I get the movement, I can stop, allow the movement to happen and either reward or ask a little more to, to get to that quarter should you need. OK, let's go back to our getting a bit of desire. So there's that, there's that little evasion that he has of turning in. Trot on. Walking isn't going to be enough to create uh, a desire to be where I want him. So he's thinking backwards right now. His head's up, he's looking back at me, saying I don't want to go forward. Okay, just keep going and I'll show you a good place to be. Oh, good. Now I might want to position him a little better. So here I can come into my clock position I need to, don't panic. You don't need to be doing it in a huge hurry. Get yourself organized and ask him to step up. Good. One more step. 
Maxon. <laughs> and then we'll just leave him, leave Sailor there just to go. God, that's a great spot to be. We'll just do one on the other rein. So we'll pull him, we'll bring him away from there. And we'll go the other way around. But I'm going to position him on the same side. So this time the mounting block is going to be on the outside of the circle. Trot on. So again, slightly backward in his thinking there with the tap. He's thinking about kicking me, or kicking the whip really. And that's why you want something to keep you away from your horse, something a bit longer. But when he does start to travel, we just say, yeah, there you go. That's all we want. Just round you go. You got it. So it's, oh, oh. Good, that was very good. Good stop, stayed on his line of travel, but we'll have to just ask him, step up. So I'm just showing him this, just to say, need you to move, not past me. So the clock's really helped there. If I've got a pressure and I, on the pole, so there's a little pressure there, and I introduce the whip, that pressure should she should start to take the cue from the pole and come forward. If I've got a pressure on his nose, then, and I ask to cue the side a little bit, then that pressure tends to go back. If there's no, not so much pressure on the pole or the, or the nose, so here and here, then we'll get our sideways or more of our sideways movement. So again, we let him just rest there, relax, really enjoy that spot. And once he's there, and he's good, I might just pop up here and if I get a chance, I might do some grooming, you know, just give him a little rub and get him really comfortable with me being up here and make him think this is the best place in the world. Now, hopefully you've got those first, first parts starting to come together for your mounting. However, one of the most annoying problems that people get when they're trying to mount their horses is when they put their foot in the iron and you get that shift away from the block. They just move their hind end just far enough away that you can't quite get on. Really annoying. So again, we need to have a solution to that and that requires movement. So we're going to look at teaching Sailor here how to step to me with the hind end to counter that step away that some horses do at the mounting block. So I'm going to work on this side of my horse, on this hip, okay? And we're going to get him to start stepping to me from a touch on that hip. Now I generally start on the fence. The reason for this is when, I, when you start this exercise, Horses can start to push, push forward. And what we want to try and do is create an open door, which is towards us. So I'm going to use the fence. So if my horse feels like they're getting pushy and wants to push forward, I'm going to redirect my horse into the fence. So, so there's a little bit of pole pressure there. So as I step over here, there's some pole pressure. If they don't respond to that, I will say, there's a whip. Okay, the whip means move, okay. Right, so we're going to just get him along the fence. Now I'm going to touch that exact same spot that I touched when I was doing the clock. And I'm going to push his head into the fence. So we just touch with the rhythm. There, good boy. Good boy. Okay, so I'm using the exact same cue, but for a horse it is slightly confusing because Horses are really good at making associations. So they would think if I'm on this side, then I automatically go away from you. However, they have to be more specific about where the cue is coming from. It's coming from that same point that I was touching when I was doing the clock exercise. So he's done one really good one there. And you can see he was thinking about being cranky because he wasn't quite sure what to do but he made the right movement. So instantly I stopped, gave him a rest, 
and then we'll come back and we'll repeat that again. So again, direct his head towards the fence. Okay, keep him sort of along the fence so that the open side is very obvious. There's a little step and we'll move him on. Nose to the fence, little touch, another step, good. On we come again. Nose to the fence, good. Great job. So now we're going to have a look at the other side. So this will be bringing him more into line with my um, mounting to correct a problem that some horses do get. There's a good clock movement. Always start with the clock just as a Good, it's getting balanced up there. Always start with the clock, just as a matter of reminding your horse about that cue there, about that touch on the hip. So again, we'll say over. So you can see a lot of my taps there are actually air taps. I'm not really touching sailor because I don't need to. It's just that energy that I'm creating from the movement. So be aware. Do as much as necessary. Sometimes you've got to give them a bit of a bump to create movement. Other times you can be just to indicate and that's enough for them to go, um, I've got it and I know what you're after. All right, let's try that again. See, there's a forward cue. Show the whip con, move those feet. Okay. Now let's try the other side. So we're gonna, short we've got our rope fairly short now indicate this side so you can see nose to the fence <laughs> and step him over i'm not sure whether that was because of the horse is winning or because he was being really good so nose to the fence indicate good step well done okay over nose to the fence and one more step, perfect. When we start to do this at a mounting block, we first have to check that we can do it away from the fence, get this step away from the fence. Because obviously sometimes when we're getting on a mounting block, it will be in the center of the school. Now we know sort of barriers to stop your horse from moving. So we need to check our control with that. Now I start doing this by sort of just come away from the fence a couple of meters and just see if you can hold that line while you ask for it, while you ask for that sideways step. So now I'm a couple of meters away, just step over here. So we're almost in a similar position we would be on the fence and then a little touch and then there. That's brilliant. Now we're starting to get to that good place where we've got a little bit of control over our sideways. We've got a desire to be by the mounting block. The only thing we haven't really checked, which is always good, but I have been working on this while I'm doing the clock, is backwards. So, although I haven't talked about um, that movement, it has been worked on. So, if I put a, a pressure on the nose, and I'm looking for a backward step. Good. Okay. Again, all vitally important when we're trying to position our horse to let them realize this is where you need to be. Now, rather than walking into the mounting block and positioning your horse where you want them to get on, what is a really good idea to practice is standing on the mounting block, getting your horse familiar with it, and then making sure, bringing your horse into this position, almost like he, he knew what I was wanting. So the head is just here, and then we'll try uh, a tap on the hip. Now, if he goes to move away from you, see if you can just keep, and there, there's the step. Good. He stepped back. So we can get into a sort of a figure of eight pattern here. So if I tap here, 
and I say, can you, can you please, not that way. If he goes too far that way, I can swap, tap on this side, still tapping the same spot, using the mounting block, and tap again. Tap again. That's not, not quite right. That's a good step, well done. Let's try that again. That's a great step. Well done. He's still not in a position where I can get it, get on. When he's in a position that I can get on, he'll be facing the camera. That's the ideal spot. Good step. He's stepping just back, back into it. And that way. Good step there. Well done. Good. Let's see if we can get a little step here. Oh, that's a good step. Great. Well done. So you can see that little sort of figure of eight pattern where I'm sort of working over the top of him and even I have to be on the same side, but I'm working the same point. So I'm just working on um, his right hip to get him to come back to this point and realize that that is a good place to be. I can barely get him away from the mounting block now. So let's keep him towards the mounting block. Good. As I would do the fence. And there's a good step. Well done. And let's try that one more time. And that's great. And now we're starting to get into that really good position where we can start to get on. And also, when I start to get into getting on, if I put my foot on, I might even practice this. I have a head collar on, so I'm not hopping on him now. I'm just practice. If I go to get on now and he was to move, I now have all the skills I need to adjust and say, come back to the mounting block and stand there. So we've just popped the bridle on Sailor here, but I want to talk to you about getting on correctly. And when I say correctly, I mean safely. Now I get on young horses and um, remedial horses for a living. And I'm gonna show you how I get on every horse and what I do just before I always get on them. So the first thing in terms of getting on safely is to check your horse will flex. So I need a big bend in my horse's neck and be able to bend them around. So he's walking, not because I'm asking him to walk. That is a resistance to the bend that I've got him in. So we're going to end up on top of the camera here. There we go. There he's just softened off a little bit there, but his feet are still moving. Everything he's doing now is a resistance to that bend that I've put him in. He's pushing his head down, so and he's pulling against it. So I need him to just think. There's a, there is a, there it is. He's come off that. So there's now no longer any pressure. So we can take that and allow him out, and then we'll try that again. And there he is, that's much softer. So when we're doing this flexion, I try and stay by the, by the shoulder. I have about a foot and a half of rope, for, uh, rope of rain um, before the bit. So there's where my hand will be positioned. And then we bring the bend around. And you can see I'm sort of in a riding position here. So I'm actually just a little behind um, the shoulder. I can leave my hand on the pommel and I'm just avoiding his feet. Okay, watching what's moving. The hind end's moving a lot, which is fine. We don't mind the hind end moving. But he has to work out. Okay, that's good. He stopped moving his feet. Now I just need him to relax there on with the with the bit pressure. So it's just when you feel that pressure, mate, that's all you need to do. Just bend your head like that. Feel a bit pressure. Don't yaw into it or resist it. It's just there. It's not going anywhere. There is one way to get rid of it. And that is to just release. So he's still just leaning on it just a fraction. He's thinking about coming off it. He wants to go to sleep on it. Good, he's had another little try about pulling out of it. Now he wants to see if he can walk out of it. None of which is working. Now, will he take this option this time? There. He's, he's looked to bend round. So I've got my reins in, in what's called a bridge. 
So I've got a cross there and it's like that. Now this allows me, when my hand's by my horse's neck, to rotate my wrist there. This rein is loose, so it allows Sailor here to bend into that flexion that I've been telling him or been teaching him about. Now you might be asking, why is this so important? Well, if you get on a horse and a dog jumps out of a bush from behind you, or your horse is really tense, or something goes wrong, and they go to run off, buck, bolt, rear, anything like that, then having that ability to instantly, without having to change rein positions or anything like that, being able to bend your horse means that your horse comes around you and you're able to get this crossing of the hind leg, which means your horse can't do any of those flight behaviors. <laughs> can't do any of those flight behaviours that we try to avoid. So it's a precautionary measure, it's about safety. And this needs to be on your horses when you're mounting. You need to understand why and how to do that. Let's ask him over. My rein's a bit sorted. Now he's going backwards a little there, that's fine. We can just, there, good step. Okay, good. So again, we've got all those movements that we need to position our horse forwards, backwards and sideways. Once he's in a good position, relax. Now when I get on, this is really important, you can see my hands fall instantly into that position that I was just showing you. I get on with my lower leg against the saddle. I don't like to get on like this because my horse can't feel me when my knee is here. I like to have my leg against the saddle already. So I've got contact, I can feel my horse there. When I go to get on, I look at my horse's ears. I need to know what my horse is thinking. So as I get on, I take a look at my horse's ears and there. And he's now walked off. And because he's walked off, I might say, remember that, remember that thing we did on the ground? You were walking round and round in circles. How did you get out of that? That's right, you stop. So we can now position him we can get on safely, but the first thing Sailor did was walk off. And that, that generally is down to a habit, particularly with thoroughbreds who, who are jumped on on the move. They like to just walk off. So teaching them that flexion exercise and that when the head is bent round, the easiest thing to do is stop and relax their body. And you get that sort of feeling of, oh, I, I can, I'm relaxed and I get my freedom. What that does is when you hop on, if you, if you do that, A, it teaches your horse to bend and that they can disengage, but also the first thing they do is stop. Or well, the first thing you're gonna ask them to do is bend and stop. So that habit of a horse walking off after you get on starts to reduce and disappear because they're now not thinking, right, I'm off. They're now thinking, ah, when they get on, I've got to do that bend first and then off I go. So there we are. There's some tips for, for mounting. Hope it's been helpful. Good luck.